Hi, everybody. Um, next up, we have Brian Scanlon from Intercom. Um, he's going to talk to us about uh, SRE inside of a startup organization. Uh, and then when this talk is done, there'll be about a 40 minute coffee and tea break afterward, OK? All right. Take it away, Brian. Thanks. Hi, you all. Uh, it's really great to hear to be at SRECon. Some super talks so far. Um, so let's get through this presentation. Uh, so, what does SRE mean in a startup? Uh, in a startup, you know, you do typically one thing, um, and so ideas that work well elsewhere, like say error budgets, just don't make sense. Uh, so this talk goes through some things I've learned about the differences I've noticed working in a startup uh, adopting SRE compared to working in a larger organization. Uh, so a small bit of background about myself. Uh, I started my professional career as a classic Solaris systems administrator um, and ended up working in a variety of systems administration type roles with a bit of uh, emphasis on automation. Um, so I worked for the likes of the Irish Times and HENS, which is Ireland's research and education network. Um, then I moved to Amazon.com, uh, where I was involved in automation operations of uh, their core infrastructure, such as DNS services, hardware load balancers, and out-of-band networks. Um, I ended up specializing on the hardware load balancer side of things and built out uh, a team and a lot of software to automate operations around them. Uh, so a couple of years ago, though, I moved to Intercom, uh, joining as an engineer on the infrastructure team. Uh, so this gave me opportunity to work on a small, modern, and rapidly growing cloud-based infrastructure, which is very different uh, to, the t to the, the type of uh, heavy iron-based infrastructure that I've been working with in my career up till now. Uh, so I'll quickly introduce you to what uh, Intercom does and what I do for Intercom. Um, so Intercom's a mid-stage startup based in Dublin and San Francisco. Uh, it's nearly five years old. Um, and all of our product development and operations is done out of our Dublin office. Um, so Intercom is a customer messaging application, um, largely aimed at smaller uh, web businesses. Um, and it's used to uh, learn about your customers and talk to them. Um, so it's making web business personal and allows you to communicate to your customers personally and scale inside your web and mobile applications as well as over email. Um, so we store a lot of data, query a lot of data, do all sorts of crazy things with data, um, and provide API access into this stuff. Uh, so first, a, uh, a funny story. Um, so I joined Intercom from Amazon, where I worked on the low balancer team. Um, and I'd spent like, over four years, maybe five years, working in a relatively narrow area. I built up a, a reasonable understanding of uh, the operational characteristics of uh, a couple of types of commercial low balancers that Amazon were using. So I'd also done some work with the AWS Elastic Low Balancing team. I uh, was fam familiar enough with their product. Uh, so Amazon had like really rigorous and comprehensive change control process. Uh, you know, the bar is very high for a service provider to other businesses, like thousands of web businesses are built on top of. So when I joined Intercom, uh, I took a look at the low balancer config, you know, to try and squeeze some value out of stuff I knew to make it look like I knew stuff. So uh, I proposed a change to uh, something innocuous enough in our low balancer config, like maybe connection draining. Um, so I wrote up a, sh a change control thing, or, well, something short, just explaining what I was doing, why I was doing it, and felt pretty proud, like when dropping into Slack. And the reaction was uh, underwhelming. It was like an awkward silence, an air of mystery. Why, why I didn't just do it and tell the folks what I'd done. Um, so like, it, it was good for me to be transparent, uh, but there was little value in a uh, startup like, to be doing rigorous review for uh, a relatively minor configuration change where the stakes are low. And actually, I was like, probably the best person to be reviewing and understanding uh, the, the configuration change. So uh, surely I knew what I was doing. So uh, I mean, the change went fine. Um, but the risk was low, so the right thing here to do was uh, make the change and tell people about it in a lightweight manner. Um, so uh, things like change control just are completely different in a, a much smaller environment. Um, so uh, early stage startups. So uh, things are significantly different uh, in a, uh, what SRE means in a very, very small uh, startup. So this is you know, 10 people in a room. Uh, so in a way, this is actually like pure SRE. Like there's no ops team to throw things over to. Uh, like uh, everyone's frantically coding or building things to build a business out of nothing. Um, so, uh, and you know, there's no support uh, for a bunch of stuff. So you've got no monitoring team to fall back on. There's no, way, no, no escalations, no one to bring in. Um, so, but of course, having a single team doing everything, it falls apart pretty quickly. And in reality, it ends up being one or two people uh, doing this job. Uh, so in Intercom's case, it was mostly the co-founder or CTO who ended up taking on a lot of the ops work, uh, ops works. Um, so SRE and mid-stage startups, 
Uh, you tend to be also missing a lot of teams as well, so you have to, again, kind of build out a lot of your own infrastructure. And uh, like a lot of the biggest value you get is by, say, picking vendors, uh, like other third parties to build your platform on top of, um, and architecting it so that uh, the likes, and making sure your architecture uh, kind of scales so that the likes of operations, scaling, and capacity planning can be done in different places across the company. Um, so it's important to do things like choosing less technologies. Uh, you know, if you, if you, if every small team that's just kind of establishing themselves and they choose their own technologies to solve a problem to hand, it means you can end up with uh, an architectural mess which can be difficult to uh, come back to and even just have uh, move people around teams, it can be difficult uh, if, if every team has got their own stack. So using less technology is kind of a, an important thing to establish uh, relatively early on while, as the startup grows. Um, like as uh, as the startup moves on and kind of architecture grows up, maybe architecture overhauls can become interesting. Whether it's sharding out data or uh, moving things to microservices, um, but chances are, uh, when you're building out teams. Uh, we're moving from a small size startup to mid-stage, you're going to be building out the teams to dedicate them to building out new functionality. They're not going to have SRE necessarily as their main objective. Uh, you know, they want to grow the business, they want to grow specific parts of it really well. So it tends to be the case that uh, the SRE function will coalesce into uh, some central group. So here's a bit of, uh, uh, bit of history or a bit of background as to how we've ended up with an SRE function across multiple teams at Intercom. Uh, so I can actually give some numbers. So I think the engineering team is around 60 people, um, including, so that includes like our product engineering, uh, security, infrastructure team. Um, and so we do this all in our Dublin office, um, which is great for like high bandwidth communication and just being able to get everything done in one place. Um, I've got a, a very scientific looking diagram of our architecture. Uh, so. Uh, we run a reasonably standard uh, AWS setup uh, in the biggest region, US East 1. Um, so, you know, we use normal building blocks like ELB, there's DNS, there's uh, CDN up there. We've got web servers behind the ELBs running Nginx. And uh, one of the points here is that a lot of those kind of individual boxes, uh, they're all running the same software. Uh, Intercom is largely a monolithic Ruby on Rails application. Um, so we use, uh, you know, we've got the code well organized, so sort of separations of concerns uh, within the application, and so we can have multiple teams working on different parts of the application, uh, so it isn't just a complete mess. Um, and we've got teams who uh, work on individual parts of Intercom uh, on the different features that customers use. So in this case, like if we have uh, our, our web uh, endpoint. This is the one that provides our web application. And so we would have different teams working on that compared to, say, our API endpoints or even some of the functionalities of Intercom. Um, so by using multiple endpoints and by organizing our code correctly uh, and by having different data stores to, uh, to, to uh, serve different purposes, we get to largely separate the concerns and, you know, Make, make it operable, make sure that we can reduce the blast radius uh, to protect us against from running out of capacity, a, say a customer pattern coming along, a customer doing something that comes along and exhausts a particular pool of capacity, uh, or maybe a bad code deploy in an area, or one, part, one data center that's underneath it all, uh, or one data store that's underneath it all starts to slow down for some reason. Uh, so it largely separates the different functions of Intercom uh, despite, uh, and just uh, despite having like a single application. So uh, we have some services that have been broken out into individual uh, microservices. Uh, in, in this case, you see our real-time webhook applications. They're standalone applications that don't share any of the business logic that's uh, stored in the monolithic Ruby on Rails application. Um, and they would have different performance requirements and characteristics and were basically built from scratch. So uh, they were never built in the same code base. Um, and so you know, they're separated out into separate APIs, uh, just like a, uh, a larger um, environment might be built on top of. Uh, so the, my team is team infrastructure, uh, or at least one of the teams I work with. Um, so. Uh, Team infrastructure are basically the, the team that ended up being the, the, the SRE team or like the ops team. 
uh, for Intercom. But we actually do a bunch of SRE ourselves um, for a bunch of things that we carry out, as well as supporting the other teams who now do SRE inside Intercom. Uh, so one of the ways that we use to organize ourselves are our team's uh, core values. Um, so these are the values that we use to guide our work. And so we balance these off against each other and, of course, against the other values of the company. So uh, the one I want to point out here is like running, running less software. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that in places, say, like Google or Amazon, uh, like a lot of tools or, uh, or services, they've got a big impact. There's real productivity wins or big latency gains or maybe improved costs uh, by running a service yourself and running it well. Uh, but in smaller environments, there's a lot of things that just don't matter that much. Um, so, for example, we were having a discussion the other day uh, on my team about uh, the provider we use for alerts. So uh, we use PagerDuty, who are another good SaaS business. Uh, and for the most part, we're pretty happy with them. You know, they, uh, they managed to get pages to us. We're pretty happy with them. Um, but, uh, you know, we could evaluate a, uh, an alternative. Um, but changing provider would have involved like my team evaluating them, negotiating them, training our uh, pr training other people in the company, like migrating our configuration, rolling it over. So this is a significant barrier to moving, and because we're a small team, uh, it's it's difficult for me to see how uh, how a paging provider could like even say a paging provider was ten times better than PagerDuty uh, could make it worthwhile to, uh, to to take on that work. Um, unless, say, pages you just stopped sending pages or something. So um, uh, that we're uh, a small organization with limited time, we're growing fast, we're in a race against time as a startup. Um, so the value that moving to another pager provider, uh, despite like there might be some features that we'd want, uh, it's just not worth the effort. Um, so uh, you know we have to. Uh, Fo keep ourselves focused, and that's where things like running less software uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, very important to our team. Uh, so uh, here are the teams in Intercom that, we're, that do SRE. Um, so pretty much over half our teams are not listed here, and uh, they, are, they don't do SRE, classic SRE. Uh, they would do lightweight on call, and they would be teams oriented around product components. They'd be staffed out by product engineers, which are basically software engineers, um, who are focused on building out uh, new features, new components, working with the product teams. Um, and uh, infrastructure, we act as an enabler. So uh, we own the relationships with most vendors. You know, we, we, we have this uh, uh, running less software mantra. So uh, we use everyone from PagerDuty, New Relic, a uh, huge amount of AWS, uh, log entries, Datadog, Fusion Passenger. Like there's a, a long list of services and software components that we build our business on top of. Um, and we don't want every other team having to relate, manage these relationships individually. So we, we take those, optimize them. Like in the case of AWS, we would do a lot of uh, reserved instances and making sure that we've got a really solid relationship with our AWS account manager um, and kind of protect teams from. Um, uh, having to do uh, their own negotiations and kind of heavyweight um, account management with uh, those organizations. Uh, but we do do our own uh, SRE for some of the functions that we do on within uh, uh, the organization. So uh, build and deploy is probably the most important uh, aspect of what our infrastructure owns. So every, we own the, uh, the build lifecycle and the deploy lifecycle of taking software that gets checked into GitHub, making sure that it's tested correctly, we package it up, and we get it out to all of our servers and give full control to our developers uh, and our product teams to be able to deploy their software uh, as fast as they want, as many times in the day they want, uh, and in a safe and secure manner. So uh, we do full SRE on this. We write a lot of codes to, uh, to, to get this done. Uh, we take advantage of a bunch of third parties, but we also have a, a lot of code that we run and write day to day to uh, keep this working. Um, additionally, we own like the core platform of, of Intercom, so uh, everything that runs on the AWS platform uh, from the load balance, for everything from DNS down to the, uh, like the Ruby on Rails framework that we use. Um, so uh, this is all kind of classic SRE work, and again, there's a lot of automation in there, uh, a lot of classic um, you know, building AMIs, making sure dependencies are correct, that kind of thing. Uh, but then there's a lot of stuff that we do that, uh, that support for other, t other SRE teams to be able to do their job. <coughs> um, such as, say, mo monitoring. So we don't want every SRE team uh, having to configure their own monitoring stack or even different parts of their product having a different monitoring stack. So we, uh, we decide, manage, and uh, provide an interface for, for the teams to be able to build on top of the stuff. Um, 
so this, this works reasonably well, the setup of having uh, infrastructure, developer experience, pipeline, and delivery all doing their own kind of on-call, um, uh, scaling of their data stores, monitoring, and understanding their product deeply. Um, like I, I, we've kind of toyed with the idea of having a shared on-call between teams, but I've lost this argument a few times. Uh, so teams like really like, uh, people don't like doing on-call for stuff that they don't, they're not working with day to day. Um, so this is true in large organizations as well as a small one. People are a lot more comfortable uh, working on stuff that they've got uh, control over, that they feel uh, affinity to, um, and that they can feel like they can influence. So, uh, uh, so let's see. The the other team, uh, like w one thing that works well is, is also is that we rotate people in and out of these teams. Um, so between the teams that don't do kind of classic SRE as well as these teams, um, because we're in a smaller organization, uh, it's possible for us to do this because the barrier to uh, move people between teams just aren't that high. For the most part, the technology is the same. There's a relatively common architecture, the framework is the same, the similar patterns mostly between the teams. Um, so that's not to say that there's no cost between me moving people around, but it's, it's relatively easy for us to expose um, uh, people between the SRE teams and between the product teams, and also it's, it's a good function. Like we, uh, whenever we hire someone into Intercom, we move them around teams deliberately uh, to build context, understand the architecture in different places, as well as just building up good people contacts. Um, so this is a good way of uh, making sure that there's a common kind of SRE approach uh, across the org, but also there's awareness of it, and we don't have these silos of uh, uh, people who are oblivious to the functions of SRE. Um, so the way we hire uh, tends to be that we just we hire product engineers, which are basically software engineers who uh, are particularly uh, product aware or oriented, um, and we hire systems engineers or uh, site reliability engineers uh, who, again, have good automation skills. They're going to be supporting and building out uh, some services that require t uh, you to write software for, uh, as well as having good classic systems administration skills. Um, and again, we, there's fluidity between the roles. A number of SREs who joined are now product engineers, and vice versa. We've got product engineers who joined who are in uh, a SRE type role. Uh, so, what is SRE at a startup? Uh, it, it's, like it's, it's like everything else in a startup. It's chaotic, it's scrappy, it changes more rapidly than in larger organizations. Um, teams and their makeup change more frequently as they adapt to different projects they're working on, different uh, things that are ongoing. Um, and there's less established patterns in, inside the organization to guide you. However, SRE is a powerful organizational pattern to enable tools to deliver great products by keeping them focused on customer-centric outcomes, such as availability, performance. Um, at the same time, while it does you know, slow down teams, uh, it ensures that the outcomes of the team are customer focused and goes some way to ensure the right balance between development and operations. Uh, you know, we, we, I don't want to say we got this down perfectly, but we're learning and this, SRE is a, is a strong part of uh, our approach here. Um, a lot of uh, SRE patterns, uh, as the the role has become established, um, are documented in things like the Google SRE book. Um, so they come from larger or, uh, organizations. So they don't apply in startups or mid stage startups or smaller organizations, but the problems are largely the same. I think uh, no matter what the size of the company you work in, you still need to know what the highest impact you work you can do is, and you need to be able to communicate the value done the value done by your team elsewhere in the organization. So the problems of SRE really uh, are quite similar in larger and smaller organizations. Just I think there's more patterns you need to figure out yourself in smaller places. So a small plug. Uh, Intercom are putting on a small social event in our office tomorrow evening after the happy hour, sponsored by Facebook. So it's in our office, which is just down the road on St. Stephen's Green. And we have uh, a fully functional bar in the office. and We'd love to see some of you there. Uh, so pop over to our desk in the vendor area to pick up an invite. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions. So, um, my question is, uh, like I work for a, a much, much bigger organization that could have really utilized some of the things we were talking about in its early stages of growth to avoid some of the chaos that we deal with. Um, but that being said, like 
could you take a step forward? And as your company grows, what, what part of this do you think you guys are going to have to throw away? Have you started to see some pain points out of the way you've kind of grown things? Um, yeah, just what, how do you feel like the future sort of holds for you? Do you think this will keep working for you forever? Uh, no. Uh, I, I think our software architecture needs to adapt to, <clears throat> as we grow, to uh, allow teams more independence, to, uh, to not be a, a monolithic application. And so there's an evolution there of uh, the, the whole software stack uh, that it then enables teams to do SRE and enables uh, independence. So whether it's uh, as, as a feature or as a, of how to operate them, um, I think we need to, 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 to iterate on our architecture and move so that we can do more SRE in more places. I think at the moment we're probably at the limit of the number of SRE teams we can have. And there's still even then a lot of crossover between uh, the, uh, the operations work that, team, that teams do. We've still got a lot of shared concerns between data stores and shared concerns between the front end. Um, so I think uh, we've got a long way to go to uh, at a technology level as well as a uh, like ownership level to be able to take on more SRE work around the company. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you.